All right, so I'm gonna do a series of videos and it'll be titled something along the lines of changing your perspective for the better. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about a lot of topics, but with this one, I'm gonna talk about changing your perspective on your relationships, okay? So the purpose of this series is basically going to be giving you reasons why you should shift your way of thinking if you just so happen to have one of those programs instilled in your thinking that are typically used as a weapon that you might not be aware of. And I say it's used as a weapon in a way in which it's going to be basically revealing that people are being programmed to think certain opinions or have certain perspectives on life in order for them to not benefit from it and for their competitors to benefit from you not being able to compete as well. Because, I mean, truth be told, whether you like it or not, life is a big competition and everybody's competing for position. And a lot of the time, people, uh, when you're aware of how well psychology can be used as a weapon, a lot of people are able to be manipulated by influencing their opinions, especially when it comes to your opinions on yourself and the way that your life is supposed to go. And if somebody just so happened to be a master manipulator, they're gonna be really good at being able to get you to think thoughts that actually aren't original thoughts, or should I say that aren't your thoughts. And should I specifically say that they're gonna be thoughts that were intentionally imposed upon you in order for the imposer to benefit. So hopefully you're following. All right, so let's talk about relationships specifically. Relationships. Now, I see a lot of people who use the term relationship and they might be talking about one particular kind of thing. They might only be talking about romantic. But when I'm, when I'm using these terms, I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna talk about it in different uh, aspects. So I'm gonna talk about romantic relationships. I'm gonna talk about relationship with yourself. I'm gonna talk about relationships when it comes to business and all of that stuff. So follow me. Now, since everybody normally uses the term relationship and they're talking about somebody else uh, as a significant other, or should I say just romantic, let's go ahead and start with that one. Now, there's a lot of people who have a perspective on how their romantic relationship is supposed to go and how their life is supposed to reveal or bring upon this special person. Because most people are just seeking one special partner. So I'm just gonna talk about the, the programs, right? Because of course you could easily have multiple romantic partners, but of course people are programmed to specifically want one person and think that there's the one out there and all those type of things. So let's talk about that. People, a lot of the time, will not realize the right person, even if they're right in front of them, because they didn't even know what it would look like in, in the first place. And I noticed a lot of people, especially young females to be specific, they trick themselves into thinking that things are supposed to go a certain way in order for it to be what it is that they think that they want. People fail to acknowledge a lot of the time how well they don't know themselves, though. So the funny thing is, whenever you're making wishes and setting goals and stuff like that, you gotta know that you only partially know what you really want because the only way you really know if you wanted that is once you get it and you're living that life. So really, you, you're supposed to be more open-minded. And I find that a lot of people, when it comes to the ideas of the relationships that they think they want, they aren't actually open-minded enough to even receive the special person that is definitely out there for them. And when you understand how the universe works, all of this works off of frequencies. And if you're actually ready for the right person, they're gonna come in front of you. But if you're too stupid to even accept the offer that the universe made you with this special person, then you're gonna end up pushing them away anyway. Or you're gonna do something to self-sabotage, you're not gonna take them back, or some nonsense like that. So let's talk about this in a more detailed example real quick, okay? So if you're a woman, right? And of course this will work with men too, but I'm using the women as an example specifically because I have a lot of experience in life with women in particular. So I know a lot of women who could tell themselves something like, my dream man is gonna look like this, but they don't even really know how to necessarily control their reality and get the other stuff that they want already. So if you know that the biggest thing that could ever happen in life is attracting another soul that actually resonates with you and, and that you actually see here with it, with them, like, bro, you got to know that that's a really big deal and it's a really big achievement. And it's not easy to do, especially if you're not even good at getting things smaller than that. Like if you're not even good at 
uh, being happy on an everyday basis, if you're not even good at getting the simple things in life, quote unquote simple, when it comes to just everyday stuff, like if you don't even have the cell phone you like, or if you don't even have the job that you want, or if you're not living in whatever lifestyle it is that you feel like you uh, deserve. If you're not even good at granting yourself the smaller things, you know, like shoes, clothes, you know, little material things. Of course, I'm talking about the earth element here. If you're not even good at getting the smaller things and allowing yourself to experience that, what makes you think you're gonna be good enough at attracting the right person and knowing when that right person is right in front of you in order to get it? Let me keep going though, because I got uh, this detailed example, right? I know so many women who say this right here. They'll say something along the lines of, oh, my dream husband is not gonna have any kids, right? You think he's not gonna have no kids, right? Okay, and I know so many that even, and of course, like I said, I'm talking men and women, they act like it's a deal breaker if somebody else has kids. But think about this. Men and women are determined to be men or women based off the simple fact that they have reached sexual maturity and they have the ability to reproduce. We're here to do that. We're designed to do that. So it actually wouldn't even make sense for you to think that you actually want an adult, but you don't even want to accept the fact that we're here to pass down our genes. And for you to judge somebody off of something so simple as them having children, I call it simple because that's the foundation of what we're supposed to do here. Nothing comes more naturally than having a sex drive. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is specifically because if you're judging somebody based off of this specific thing that they have going on, maybe they have one child or multiple kids, and you're like, I don't want to be a step parent. I want them to have no kids because I have no kids. Okay, if that's how you want to go about it, think about this. What if that guy or that gal that you're seeking has that mindset, but they're judging based off of something physical that you don't have. They might have everything else that you need, but if they got a kid, you just gonna reject them? You sound crazy as hell. If you, if they're saying something like, yeah, I want uh, my dream girl to have a big butt, and but you ain't got no big butt, you know how crazy it would be for him to see that you got everything else he needs. You're able to help him with his emotional stuff, with his business stuff, all this stuff could line up. Y'all could be physically attracted to each other and all that, but if he's like, uh -uh, I'm stuck on the fact that she ain't got a big enough butt. So I'm gonna just reject her. You know how crazy that looks or sounds? Bro, that's shallow. That's very, very shallow. If you're judging somebody based off of just one characteristic, I don't care if you think it's big or small or whatever. It's just one. If it's a simple fact that, oh, they come with this kind of baggage. Bro, everybody come with baggage and it look different. And a lot of people's baggage is way heavier than having kids because the, the scariest baggage is the stuff that you can't see visibly. It'll be like they have mental problems and stuff like that. Emotional traumas that they haven't fixed or acknowledged or healed from and stuff like that. So I need you to be a little more mature if you do think like that. Because your dream person could come in any shape or form. They could be any gender. They could be any walk of life. They could be any race. They could be from any background. They could have any kind of past. You can't judge people off their past like that. You're supposed to judge them based off of the way that they think now and the, the lessons that they learned in their past. And you're supposed to judge yourself based off of that too. Um, a lot of people don't look like the stuff that they done been through. And a lot of people definitely don't look how they think. <laughs> like me, for example. If you see me walking around the mall or something, you might not think that I think like this. But let me pause it. Okay, I'm back. There was a helicopter. Anyways, so what I'm saying is don't be so shallow. Don't be so judgmental based off of some surface level stuff, some earth stuff. If you're going to judge somebody based off of anything and be strict about that, that those requirements, you're supposed to be stuck on the way that they think because that's what's most likely and not changing. But if you so damn immature that you're gonna judge somebody based off of one or two characteristics about what they have going on in the material world, bro, you don't even deserve your dream person anyway. And that's probably why you ain't got them. That's probably why your relationships fail and stuff like that because it's not supposed to be so, like you're not supposed to be looking at every material thing and, and judging that for what you think it is because you got to know that your perspective is skewed based off of your point of view and how you've been programmed because you've been programmed to think you want life to go a certain type of way you're you've been programmed to think things are supposed to happen in a certain order you might have been programmed to think that you're supposed to go to school get a degree then get a job then get married then get a house then have babies bro it don't work like that for everybody there is no one size fits all in life if you haven't noticed so if you're so immature that you think that you're, you're supposed to be attached to this one idea of how things are supposed to go, you're missing the point of life anyway, bro. You're missing the whole point. 
this is supposed to be about what your soul's evolution needs and your higher self really don't care how dumb your lower self thinks so look around at your life and look at how things feel and how things are really going if you're uncomfortable in a lot of ways you got to know that that's simply because you're misaligned with your higher self because it's supposed to be easy to get what you want it's supposed to be easy to be you every day you're supposed to be walking the walk of man i'm already living the life that i want to live i'm already living that life that i dream of and if you're not you got to acknowledge bro it's only because it's a byproduct of the choices that i've been making if you're unhappy with something it's a result of the choices you've been making if you are happy with something it's a result of the choices you made so you got to be personally accountable you got to hold yourself personally accountable with everything that you do you can't be that person always blaming others blaming life if your last relationship didn't work you can't always be blaming them because you chose them so it's like bro you clearly got a lot of growing to do if you don't even recognize that all of this stuff in life is self-inflicted so i'm talking about the relationship part with with the uh romantic relationship now that i got that out of the way let's talk about something a little bit more, more important which is your relationship with yourself which i kind of just got at but your relationship with yourself is definitely going to be something that you got to acknowledge because of course if you're not even close enough with yourself to know what you need what you desire where you want to go and stuff like that you're not going to be able to grant yourself what you want because bro you, you don't even know what direction to go in because you haven't sat down and really questioned yourself question what am i doing here what am i supposed to be doing where do i want to head like where do i want to go and stuff like that if you're not really critical with yourself about the bad choices you made in life or bad habits that you have and basically a lot of the patterns that you recognize that you have like if you if you consistently recognize dang bro i keep making the same mistakes over and over again bro if you're not even mature enough to acknowledge that you keep making the same mistakes you're gonna keep making the same mistakes especially if you keep faking like you're okay with the choices that you're making like you have to be critical okay you have to actually hold yourself accountable you have to be like a coach to yourself you have to be a teammate you're working with yourself really because there's so many different aspects of yourself and there's so many conflicting thoughts it's, it's like the right brain and the left brain are polar opposites so you're gonna have to figure out how to get them to converse with one another in order to get them to merge and for everything to actually make more sense in your life because there's no way that you're supposed to feel unfulfilled most of your life that's not how this goes and not saying that most people are feeling unfulfilled with their life but what i'm saying is if you have all of these ideas and you do a lot of talking right you do a lot of talking about stuff like i don't know maybe you say you want to be rich right but you never got rich once in your life and you uh have been, been alive for several decades if you never felt rich before and of course rich is a subjective term but what i'm saying is rich is a feeling if you never even felt rich and it's been all this time bro you clearly doing something wrong or if you're not feeling like that most of the time you're doing something wrong if you don't even know how to gauge what you mean by what you're saying to yourself when it comes to uh, practicing uh, whatever it is that you think that you want you got to recognize that you don't have a good enough relationship with yourself so you're gonna have to acknowledge your traumas you're gonna have to acknowledge man i really do want to have this and you can't be that person always settling for less than that if you know you want the blue one don't settle for the orange one if the orange one's sitting there you got to be like hey you know what yeah i see that i could get this orange one this is the only one available right now i'll take it but i'm not gonna stop until i get to the blue one you know for example or whatever it is because what i'm saying is you have to be able to recognize the opportunities that your higher self is presenting to you so you got you got to make sure you actually do acknowledge a good opportunity when you see it and don't be stupid enough to just turn it down completely which is what i was saying about the relationship thing if you come across somebody and they might be okay they might be pretty cool you, once y'all get closer you're going to think they're more than just kind of cool so you got to be willing to go on the journey and stuff because just because you take this one step don't mean that you got to stop there and you shouldn't especially if you know that that's not where you want to end up it's okay to date somebody and then it fall off and stuff like that it's so but it's also okay to give something a shot and really go for the moon because you never know it could actually work in your favor you could actually get what you want now of course there's a big difference between settling and just like kind of in a way just accepting what it is that's available right now in order to progress and continue on and you got to know the difference there's a big difference so of course you you're going to have to determine that yourself and have good judgment within your own self but man this is so important so we talked about the relationships with uh significant others we talked about relationships within yourself now let's talk about relationships and business now this part is really easy if you got the other two already together now in business of course the only way for you to actually be good at business is if you recognize whatever objectives you want to achieve 
Because if you can't even put together a plan, a business plan, if you can't even put together some kind of like thesis on what you expect to happen, then bro, you're gonna fail in business anyway because all you're doing is basing off of emotion and impulse. So you're gonna have to be really good at acknowledging, okay, this is what it's gonna take to get to this goal. And this is my step-by-step -step process in which I'm gonna do that. Now, of course, when business is a lot more left brain. So of course, we are, I was just talking about the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. You gotta recognize that this is masculine and feminine energy. So when you're thinking on the feminine side, you gotta be more creative. You gotta be open to basically the feelings and emotions and things of that nature. But the, the left brain is what's gonna bring this down to earth and really make it practical. So it's gonna be very easy for you to be able to get things you want in, out of the material world business-wise when you already did what you needed to do on your creative side with getting to know yourself. And of course, anytime somebody actually feels fulfilled in the romantic aspect of life, that means that you got somebody on your side or somebody on your team. Now, all that stuff that I said about the romance part also applies with just friendships in general. So just keep that in mind. But everybody got this thing where they like to get stuck on the surface like don't get stuck on the surface level stuff the only way you're really gonna know if somebody is the right person for you is if you stick with them long term anyway unless of course it's obvious and they're giving you major deal breakers but what i'm saying is if you come across somebody who you clearly could see some potential but you so stuck on oh they got kids or oh they don't have enough money or oh they look like this they dress like that they drive this car or they don't have a car or some shallow bs like that bro oh they don't have a house yeah, what about all the stuff that you ain't got that they want you to have? Like, bro, don't be so shallow because somebody else could judge you the same way and you don't want somebody to do you like that. But like, I'm really supposed to be talking about, let's talk about the business thing. But like I said, the business thing is really easy to comprehend whenever you get the other stuff already. But when it comes to the business relationships, it's, the, it's really the same concept. But of course, you're gonna have to make sure that you know your strengths and weaknesses, which naturally goes back to your relationship with yourself. When you know your strengths and your weaknesses in life in general, you're definitely going to know them in business. And when you know them in business, if you're a good business person, you're going to get really good at being able to hire or introduce the right people to the task in order to get it done and fill in your gaps, you know? So that's super important to recognize is that one, with business, you can't do it alone. Like you can temporarily, but you shouldn't be trying to do anything in life all alone all the time. So if you're one of those introverts, Make sure that you're okay with reaching out sometimes because being an introvert is all well and cool when it comes to getting on yourself. But you'll never be fully fulfilled in life as a whole unless you're good at the introverted stuff and the extroverted stuff. It's like I said, the masculine and the feminine. The feminine and the masculine. You have to be willing to play the game in both ways. It's a balancing act. And anytime something's balancing, it's gonna lean left and right. You ever seen somebody uh, trying to do gymnastics, right? They're on a the balance beam. They're not just leaning one way trying to keep balance. They're gonna have to do both because that's how this works. That's the way this universe works. So you're just gonna have to recognize that and accept that this is how it works. I know you might have a weakness of, well, whatever it is. I don't even wanna talk about something too specific because I want this to be able to apply to most people. But when it comes to the business relationship, it's super important to be willing to network. It's super important to be willing to cut somebody off once you realize that they don't have what you need. It's also super important for you to be willing to give somebody a chance to take a risk on somebody. And of course, you're taking a risk on yourself every day too. So make sure you have compassion, make sure you're forgiving. You have to be willing to forgive. And just on that same subject, when it comes to the relationship part and the uh, romantic side, you also have to realize when the potential is so freaking good, and it's actually going okay most of the time, that's the best you can freaking do, bro. Nothing's gonna go perfect all the freaking time. This is this is the real world, quote unquote. So you gotta make sure that when somebody does make a mistake, because it is just a matter of time to you screw up and they screw up, you gotta be willing to forgive yourself. You have to be willing to forgive them. And if you know 90 plus percent of the time, everything is good between y'all, when somebody does screw up, even if it's a big screw up, bro, just forgive them. <laughs> Make sure they learn their lesson. Make sure they're not going to do it again and again. But you have to be mature enough to forgive and don't just burn a bridge just because one thing happened. Like, bro, I've seen so many people, they actually could have been with the right person. They might have actually been with the right person, but they do one mistake. The person made one mistake and then you get so attached to that one mistake that they made. You can't move on. You don't even know how to heal. And before you know it, you done destroyed the whole relationship. And it's like, bro, you realize how hard it is to find somebody you resonate with out here? Why are you better... 
You better be grateful when you find a good person. If you know they're a good person at the core, but they just simply make mistakes just like everybody else, bro, you should expect people to screw up sometimes. Get real. Like, you mess up, don't you? I'm sure you do. So it's just like, I've seen so many people get in their own way and self-sabotage because they, they're so stuck on how things are supposed to go. Bro, things are going how they're supposed to go already. They go how they're supposed to go. The only thing you can control is the choices that you make. So if you're doing this stuff, make sure you stop and acknowledge all the weaknesses that you might have. And until next time, <laughs> I holla, bro. <laughs> Click the thumbs up button for me and all that.